welcome back to my habitat. I'm Andrew Beauchamp and today I'm trying my luck at winter sewing. Let's get started. First off, winter sewing is very new to me. We start with a plastic container just like so. Remove the lid, you don't need it. It helps airflow. It also helps water get in, moisture. And then you take off the lid somewhere like that. I leave it a little bit attached just to make it a little bit easier to tape it back up at the end. But once you have that done, obviously make holes in the bottom for drainage. Moist soil goes in, sow your seeds, um, a little bit more water, water those in, and then tape this back on and we place that outside in the cold temperatures. Really kind of a crazy concept to me, but apparently it works really, really well and you get really strong seedlings that are already hardened off. This is a great little hack if you're somebody like me who doesn't have much growing space inside their home, like I'm working with just that rack behind me, or if you're somebody who just doesn't have the money for the setup because the setup can be quite expensive and it's a quite a uh, large investment, but this is a great method for sowing perennials and some cold hardy annuals. The second method, very, very simple. You will sow your trays just like usual, but you're gonna place them in a clear plastic tote and that's gonna be the greenhouse, kind of like how the plastic bottle works as the greenhouse. Now the cons of the tote method from what I've seen online, of course I haven't tried it yet, is the fact that it doesn't stay as warm, you can get ventilation issues, and watering issues are a bit more of an issue because I already know that there's not gonna, I'm not making a hole over each one of these um, little cells for water to get into. I'm gonna have to open up the lid, water them individually throughout the next few months. Another good note to think about though is that these aren't producing big giant plants, these are gonna provide you with very strong seedlings. So a smaller plant that's much more hardier that you don't have to worry about hardening them off to the sun, to the weather, to the cold, whatever it may be in your zone or at that time that you plant your plants. But with that being said, let's take a look at the plants we're gonna be planting today. Let's start with the ones that I'm putting inside the jugs. I'm gonna have two jugs of Gallardia, beautiful, beautiful flower. I'm planning on putting quite a bit of this into my front yard garden for some really nice color. I love Gallardia. And then I'll be doing one bottle of Gem Red Dragon. Love this plant, I have never personally grown it. My mother had it in her garden at one point. The flowers that I'll be planting inside the tote, now these are a little bit more cold tolerant, uh, meaning they can go down to lower zones where the Gallardia and the Gem can ha don't handle the cold as well. The first one we're gonna be planting is the Columbine Leprechaun Gold. Beautiful plant, beautiful flowers, and it's got variegated foliage, which just makes my heart beat really fast. Icelandic poppies, second flower we're planting. Now I grew these last year. My mom gave me a few plants that she bought. Absolutely stunning, but I wanna try growing some from seed so I can have even more in my garden this year. Yes, I'm finally growing my delphiniums. I think I talked about it in at least a dozen videos last year. Every single time I was in my front yard, I pointed to my two little delphinium plants and I was like, I need more here. So that's what we're doing. Delphinium Pacific Giant Mix, a bunch of beautiful colors, and they grow four to six feet tall. And I can't wait for those big, beautiful flower spikes to appear. White globe thistle, beautiful, beautiful flower, and I'm going to be putting these in my front yard if they come up. Fingers crossed they do. Here we go, first one done. How do you feel? Exhilarated, if this works, I'm honestly so excited. I, I hope it works, because they're gonna be stronger seedlings and there's just less space being taken up on my rack, which can help in years to come whenever I have a bunch of perennials that I wanna sell, I can do this method. So I'm praying this works out well.
The two Gallardia and then the one gem are all done. Let's get on to the rest. I also ended up finding another gray container. So instead of just having two pots, I have four cells of thistles now, which is very, very exciting because I have a few ideas of what I want to do with them because they're a beautiful picked flower. It's important to have a clear plastic lid and just a clear plastic container in general, just so the light can get in there. This already has drainage holes at the bottom because I used this to grow lettuce a few years ago. Now, what I have to do is collect all these beautiful things and bring them outside. I'll show you where they ended up. So this is where they're gonna stay for the next three months or so. Really hope this works, cause this is a really cool method. Uh, until then, I will of course give you updates if anything exciting happens, but we'll probably be coming back here in um, early spring to then plant whatever we have. Thank you guys for watching. Till next time, stay planting.